Hello and welcome. This is Matthew. And today I want to take a look at two very quick uh, tweaks we can make to our system to make our day-to-day -day interactions perhaps a little bit less frustrating. The first one has to do with our TSO session timeout. You'll notice I've been inactive for just about 10 minutes here. And if I continue not doing anything, the system will just automatically terminate my session once we hit that 10 minute point. Now that may be good on public systems with a lot of users. If a user walks away, you don't want them to continue tying up resources. Uh, it could be a security concern if somebody just walks away from a terminal and leaves it logged in. But in our, uh, see there, it just, it just logged me out. But for my system, you know, I may have a screen up and because I'm still learning a lot about the mainframe and trying to figure out how things work, I may get somewhere and then spend quite a bit of time trying to find documentation and reading the documentation, uh, perhaps working on putting together some code or a JCL job stream over on the Linux side of things in an editor. And I hate flipping back over to my MVS TSO session only to find that whatever I was in the middle of is gone and I'm just sitting here at the logon screen. So let's go ahead and change that. Uh, now, what we can do, uh, there's a few ways to do this, but the way that I find most effective for me is to add a time parameter to the JCL uh, uh, job stream that is my, or I should say that starts the TSO interactive process. And to do that, I need to know what my login procedure is. Now, you may not know what your login procedure is. We can check it by looking at our account definition using the account program. However, our day-to-day -day user is created, or at least the way I created it in the installation videos, uh, is not authorized to use the account facility of TSO. So we need to log on as the uh, essentially the super user or an account that has that permission. And we have just such an account. It's, uh, we need to log on, IBM user. So this is kind of the default account that gets created when, uh, when the system is installed. And right now it doesn't have a password. So if you've gone through those installation videos and you have your system like mine, just be aware that this IBM user is an unprotected user right now. And anybody who's able to get to your system can log on. Uh, but with that said, what we can do with the account program is view the, uh, the user definitions. To do that, we first need to allocate a file and define it as the name sysuads, because that is uh, essentially the DD name that account will use to find the accounts file you want to work with. And that is going to be the data set sys1.uads. And we can use the uh, disposition of shared there. Okay, so now the account program will be able to read the system database of users. Once we're in the account program, uh, you can say, for example, list IDs, and that will show you the users in your system. In this case, we just have IBM user, that default user. And then M. Wilson is the user we created using one of the procedures when we built this system. Uh, I can say list and then in parentheses, and I might need quotes. Let's see if this works. I can say list M. Wilson. Nope, not valid. I think I can just enter it. Yeah, without any parentheses or, okay. So it's just list M. Wilson. Uh, and we get some of the user attributes. If I hit enter to get to the next page, uh, you can see the user's password here. So clearly back in the uh, late 70s when this version of the operating system was put together, you know, the concept of storing password hashes uh, was not yet uh, something people were concerned about. It was still thought to be acceptable just to store passwords in plain text. But what we're looking for is this login procedure name, IKJ. A C C N T. Okay, so that is our login procedure that TSO runs when this user, M. Wilson, logs in. So we can edit that login procedure and just add a time equals 1440, which is JCL speak for uh, unlimited runtime. Okay, so let's end the account program. Let's log off from this IBM user. 
and we'll log on as my normal user here. And I'll go ahead and use the RFE editor. And we can look in sys1.proclib. This is where that procedure we're looking for lives. And if we browse, you can see it right down here, I-K-J-A-C-C-N-T. So let's edit that member. And you can see here, this is the exec step that is run when I log into TSO. So I-K-J-E-F-T-0-1 is the TSO command processor. It looks like it takes a few parameters, uh, one of which, and this is helpful to know, is when I log in, I will always run the CList program in sys1 command prompt TSO logon. So if I want to change what happens when users log on, if I want some commands to run automatically, uh, I can look into this CList and see what it's doing. But in our case, we just want to add one more parameter here uh, to the JCL. This will be a, a JCL parameter, and that is time equals 1440. Okay, so, whoops, that, uh, let's see, I messed that up. I hit a key that obviously isn't working in my terminal emulator. That was sys help. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this. And now if we exit, and we can exit all the way out of RFE if I log off. Next time I log on, I can now let this sit here forever, and it will never time out my session. So that's kind of convenient. Again, there's trade-offs to that, uh, but for my personal use, I prefer it this way. So the next little tweak is if we look at RFE, uh, if I go into the data set list and I say, you know, M. Wilson, I'm looking at my data sets, you know, when I quit RFE and start RFE again and go back to DS list, my previous entry is no longer here. Now, if you're used to ISPF, or perhaps you're used to RFE on the TK4 uh, minus system, for example, the turnkey distribution, you may remember that uh, ISPF or RFE will remember some of your entries on some panels and can remember some preferences for you. And that can just be kind of nice because I'm often coming back here and wanting to look at my own data sets. So it's likely that the last data set prefix I had entered here could be the one that I want to work with. Now, RFE is capable of doing that, and it does so by storing some of its own uh, preferences and history data in a data set that you can allocate and then tell it about uh, by allocating it as, I think it's called the RFE prof, RFE profile data set in your TSO session. And in fact, if we look in sys1.commandproc, let's browse that, there's this revinit member, which I'm going to edit, and this is a CList that will do just that. It will create a variable named prof uh, DSN, so the, the DSN of the profile we want to use. It builds it by making my user ID dot rev prof. So that would be mwilson.revprof. It will attempt to allocate it, and if it is uh, if it exists, it will allocate that data set as rev prof. Now, if it does not exist, it will attempt to create this data set uh, and allocate it as a new data set. So if we look down here, it will uh, make it as a, a fixed block length 80 with a block size of 2960, uh, and it will uh, create 10 directory blocks, two tracks, uh, and then two uh, alternate tracks. Uh, so right, you can see how it's creating that new data set down here. Now, there's only one problem with this. If we run this as is, uh, we'll get a complaint uh, or an error message that the volume does not exist or the volume isn't available. So what we need to do here, and there's just enough room to add a continuation character on that line, and then we can continue this and provide a volume attribute. And I will stick this on pub triple zero. So now if I run this revinit uh, procedure, C list, 
it should create this data set the first time and allocate it to TSO under the rev prof name. Uh, and then on any future occasion I run it, it should recognize that this uh, data set already exists and it will go ahead and allocate the existing data set. So let's try that out. I'll quit RFE. We will run rev init. Okay, looks like that completed without errors. So now I'll go back in RFE and let's go ahead and look at my data set list. So I'll do 3.4. And Wilson is the prefix. You can see I have some leftover files from our last video. Uh, since we installed these into the system, I'm going to go ahead and just clean up and delete these to, to keep my system clean. Uh, perfect. But you'll also note we have this new uh, rev profile, the review profile data set allocated on that pub triple zero volume. So let's, let's quit RFE again and go back into RFE, go to 3.4 again for our DS list, and notice how my previously entered data set name prefix is still there. So I can just hit enter and I'm looking at my data sets again. If we browse that review profile data set, we can see that it has created a file in here, a member in here, where it's storing uh, some of that history of what I've used. Uh, looks like it'll save the volume if I had previously entered that. Uh, so that's a nice feature, and as you use the editor, you'll notice another member pop up in there that's saving certain editor preferences. Um, so it's just nice to do that because we uh, uh, we want to take full advantage of the, the features that RFE has to help us out. Now, if I log off and log back on, if I run RFE again and I go back to 3.4, you'll note it doesn't remember it. That's because we do not have, we can run the list ALC status command here in TSO, we don't have that RevProf data set allocated anymore. Since we logged out of TSO, it clears all of our allocations. So I want to run that RevInit uh, little procedure every time I log into TSO. And the way I can do that is the way this system is set up, if a user has a CList program in their user ID dot CList, and it's called STD login, standard login, that will run on login. So you can see here where that welcome to the TSO system message comes from that we see every time I log on. So if I just go to the bottom and insert a new line, I can just run Revenant, and that should take care of allocating that RevProf data set for me. So let's do that. And let's log off again. We'll log on as M. Wilson. And now we can see that that worked because if I list the allocations again, uh, let's say I'll see status. If we look through the list here, there it is. Now we have the data set M. Wilson dot rev prof allocated uh, to the TSO file name or DD name, RevProf. So if I run RFE, go back to 3.4, it's now reading that profile data and it remembers my last data set name prefix, right? So if I go to sys one proclib, you know, now if we exit and go back to RFE, it remembers that across invocations of RFE. So those are the two tips I wanted to share with you today. Uh, we set a time equals 1440 parameter on the exec step that runs TSO so that we are not kicked out after 10 minutes of inactivity. Uh, and then we also uh, told the RFE init C list the volume we want user profiles stored on, and we added that to our logon C list so that RFE knows where we want to keep our preferences, and it'll uh, be a little bit nicer to work with if it's able to just remember some of those breadcrumbs for us. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, trying to make this my quickest video yet. Uh, we'll see if I succeeded, <laughs> but those are two quick tips for you. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.